Hello again. Last time we made a tier list on the weapon classes in Cult of the Lamb, and we later found out which was the best mm, weapon in the game. However, you could go even further beyond since that's only half the story. So today, we're going to be talking and ranking the curses. Yes, or as it's better known, the sub weapon. Since every curse is a little bit different in every way, and some of you would much rather take than others, I will be ranking all of them. Even you, flaming shot. <laughs> so, jumping right into the witch's book, we'll be starting the ranking off with. Yeah, welcome in, sir. How would you like your curse? Oh, yeah, I like it with no damage. Splendid! Oh, Icorn Throne. There's so much you can improve on. This curse allows you to slightly charge and throw a miniature bomb at the enemy. It deals a good amount of damage if you manage to hit the enemy before it blasts and lands on the ground. Before the goo spreads. But I swear to god, if you miss that first hit, they're just gonna get poisoned. And the poison even that strong. Plus the enemy wouldn't even stay in the goo for that long, which most of them never do, so that means they'll just get poisoned once. Bottom of the barrel right here. But hey, at least that's the only F tier here. So you can only get better from here. Let's move on. So Call of the Crown is very similar to Icon Throw, with the added effect of possessing the enemy, but good luck hitting that with the rock. Yeah, Wait, what? Me, what the? How would huh? you like your curse? What the hell? We just made this joke. If I told you that the Path of Righteousness was similar to Icon Throw and Call of the Crown, but instead, with a trail of black ink when thrown. Would you believe me? I hope you do. Because that's all I'm going to say. Oh, finally, a new one! Divine Blight is an AoE around the lamb, which are called Blast, fittingly enough. I know. So, when you use this knockback, it also poisons them, which is basically the same as the normal Blast, but, you know, it's a bit lower since poison effects aren't that useful in Cult. Unless it's already on your weapon, plus the carrot tarts, so not that useful. First up, we have Divine Blast. This curse works exactly like Divine Blight, but it's a bit higher since it's the original gangster and is the first of its kind. Nothing special, but it's a blast to use. Point of Corruption is what you get when you mix Icon Throw and Divine Blast into one curse. It really does sound like a curse. But nah, for real though, this curse works exactly like the other throne curses, but it does an explosive damage once it hits the ground. It does an amazing amount of damage, surprisingly. It's cool. It's an awesome, that's awesome point of corruption. You are my favorite child. Shh, don't tell your siblings though. Last up in D tier, we have Flaming Shot. Now, we really have the OG of original gangsters. It's the first curse that you ever use, and overall it's a really good one. It's ranged and reliable, though compared to its fellow curses, it's not that amazing compared to what you can get. Imagine Flaming Shot was the chicken tenders and fries at a restaurant. Look dude, there are a lot better options on the menu. Now, we are cooking with some nice curses. First up, we have Strike of the Crown. This acts just like Flaming Shot, but with a hint of salt. Basically, they get hit with this, they start simping for you. And White Knight for ya. Feels good to be the king. And the wear the crown, right? Yes, king. But even the king can't escape from Death Sweep. Death Sleep is a slash in wherever direction the lamb is looking. It's a nice little combo and a useful damage. Especially if you have a boss or enemy that you can go hard read and predict and punish them. Or if there's a swarm in front of you and you just need to cut the grass. There's also a mechanic to where after charging it, there's a brief moment to where after the arrow turns white, another AoE slash happens behind the lamp. Quite neat, even though I wasn't able to pull it off on the footage. You know, flaming shot is one thing, but cleansing fire is three things since it fires like three projectiles at once and in slightly different directions but if it's close or something you hit all three shots doing some nice extra damage you'll know you wiped the 
floor with this cleaning fire. Damn, that was terrible. Sit down, child. I have a story to tell you. A tale. Something to keep in mind with one of the deepest life lessons known to man. Once there was a king that once said, With the strike of a crown comes the oaf of the crowns. It just got the tear in my eye ever since. Enough of that. Oath of the Crown is a slightly better version of Death Sweep, but can possess enemies. Also, you may have noticed that this is the highest enemy possession curse on this list, since with the higher curses, enemies tend to uh, er, eat dirt and are almost dead by the time you look on them. So, if you're trying to control them, if you already did some damage beforehand, well, uh, rip follower. Did anyone catch his name? No? Oh. Let us honor that fallen fellow with Touch of the Turna. Touch of the Turna is a lion AoE of tentacles. <coughs> it's an anime joke here. However, these bad boys can almost reach half across the room. However, they're mostly hit and do a boatload of damage. And its biggest plus is that I think they look pretty cool. And also, they're the most basic idea for a cult weapon, so yippee? Well, looky here, another blast curse, and so high up, well, it's Divine Blizzard. Sure, it works like as its fodder, but it has an ice ability, which is an amazing thing to have. You'll see, freezing an enemy dramatically slows them down, like, wow, you can get so many free hits and special attacks by doing this. Like, no joke. It's a nice special to carry out for a whole run until you find something way more powerful or a higher level. Alright, let's speed run this next one since I don't have a transition. Death Squall, basically Death Sweep and Ice together. Boom! 7.10 seconds. Try to beat that next time. <laughs> okay, let's move on to its better, cooler, and older brother. Death Attendant. Death Attendants. Look, you know how this one works. But. It's real kicker that places it higher than the rest, it's its ability to summon ghosts to damage others, in spite of its lower damage. This right here is a fantastic ability, since if you did kill an enemy with its base damage somehow, the ghost will attack the other nearby enemies, a very solid curse, but it could be unshined by a higher level curse since it's luck lesser damage, but hey! Uh, Who's looking? That goes for all curses. Nah, not just a specific debuff for this one. I switched these next two since I think the other one outmatches the other one. But to start off, we have Maelstorm. It acts very similarly to Touch of Turna, but adds three more directions it can go into. So you have a better version of Turna. Nice. Okay, okay. The next curse on this list might be a bit controversial, but at the top of A tier, we have Divine Guardian. I know, I know, it's a crime to put it here, but listen, I think this curse is just a little bit overrated since it's a skill issue for me. I like to use my curses as like a sub weapon for extra damage, not really to spam it and be like my main source of attack, but if that's something that you do to blow a bunch of damage out the water, that's fine and good for you. I just have a bit of trouble doing that myself. I typically just forget that I have this ability unless I'm low in health. But if you like killing bosses like a baby and a pit bull walked into a room, then good for you. <laughs> but for me, it's hard for me to remember this, so I'm not gonna use it. <laughs> Whew. We finally made it. The top of the line curses. The peak of human evolution has brought us here. Starting us off, in third place, we have Hounds of Fate. This curse is very unique compared to its other relatives. While Flaming Shots is just as a shot, and Cleansing Fire shoots only three shots. They only matter whatever you're aiming at, but with Hounds, you don't need to aim. You can just shoot in the general direction and it will do the rest for you. Basically, it fires multiple directiles and then homes in onto enter enemies. Very nice, and it can be used in a lot of situations. On our second place pedestal, we have Touch of Ikue, a tentacle curse, but instead 
it fires ice pillars that freezes enemies which is amazing an amazing slow great damage although results may vary all in one package it is only one of two ice based range curses and it delivers it the best finally in our number one first place is touch of the revenant oh my god oh my goodness what is there not to love it's a line aoe to where not only does it work like the previous ones with the nurse damage but has a devastating damage ghost attack so just like its ice pillar and tentacle curse before it this curse has ghost to fight for you who needs status effects when you can just have your little minions just take all the work for you and that's why this is the best curse in cult of the lamb i press my case well that is my tier list for every curse in cult of the lamb of course this is my list i could be based as fuck and maybe yours looks a little bit different so let me know if my list is trash or if i missed something out and maybe you like icon throw and if so here's your ticket to the side fork remember to join the cult and until then this is Saucebreaker, out the jar.